Ja, das war der. Ja. I don't say that. Just a reminder, birds aren't real, and also I had sex with a guy last night. Hell yeah. God sends the gospel, sends the preachers of the gospel to save, to save some, save those whom he has chosen from before the foundation of the world. But he also sends the gospel to hardened sinners. And it would be better for you here today hearing the gospel. If God does not save you, it would be better for you that you walk away now. Because this will only hearten you further. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and wickedness of men. Where do you see it? Right before you. The behavior, the conduct, and the speech of your fellow students. That's the wrath of God. That's what he's given you over to. Am I concerned for you? So concerned for you, I traveled 6,000 miles to bring this message of the gospel to you in the hope that some, some of you might hear, might take heed and obey the call of the gospel to repent and believe the gospel. Bible says that God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world. That's all men, all women and all children. That's a concern to me, and it ought to be a concern to you. It ought to cause you much and great fear. The problem is, my friends tell you that you're going to die. That's not the problem. You're already dead, says God, in your trespasses and sins. There's no life apart from God. There's no life out of Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection and the life. All you have is an existence. You were conceived in your mother's wombs in sin. That's when your sin life began. And then nine months later, you were born in sin. And you've lived in sin all your days since then, apart from the grace of God. And out of that sinful nature comes your vileness. Out of your sinful natures comes your insanity. Because of your sinful natures, the curse of God lies upon you. And it doesn't matter how long you exist in God's world. It doesn't matter what you achieve here at Yukon. Doesn't matter how high you fly. Doesn't matter what you become in the world. The curse of God, the curse of God is upon you. And the curse of God is always stronger than anything that man does. You can't get out of it. You can't get out from under the curse of God, but by the death of God's son, Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to redeem those under the curse, to take the curse from off them. He died on that cross to take the judgment of God upon himself, the wrath of God upon himself, that those who repent and believe the gospel might be set free from the curse of God and from the wrath of God. No life in you no life dead in your trespasses and in your sins cut off from God. No life in you and out of those sinful natures come nothing but your sin, your disobedience to God. Nothing but your fornicating, nothing but your filthy sodomiting, 
nothing but your lying and cheating and adultery. That's all that comes out of you. That's all you can get out of a man, a woman with a sinful nature. I'm raising my hand. What do you want? Okay. See, don't you think this is kind of counterproductive? What? Because according to the other guy, right, all I have to do is at some point in my life repent and then play But you can't do that. Right? You can't do that. What? You can't do that. I can't do that. Why not? Huh? I gotta repent. Nothing you do can save you. Nothing I do can save you. You can't That's repent. You can't believe. You said. can't do nothing. That's literally not what your buddy here. That's what you should do. That's what I should do. But you can't do it because you must be born again. In order for a man, in order for a woman to repent and believe the gospel, they have to be born again. You must be born again by, by the miraculous grace of God. Him putting his life into your soul, his love into your heart, then you'll repent, then you'll believe the gospel, but until then you can't do nothing. You're dead, 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 not a little bit dead, not a big bit dead, totally dead, cut off from God, no life in you, no life apart from God. So until God, by my gospel, breathes the breath of life into your soul, unless he gives it to you to hear, to listen, and gives you a heart and the desire to obey the gospel, you'll remain in your earthly existence, and then in a few years' time, you'll breathe your last and you'll stand before God in judgment. And he will dispense you into eternity on the basis of what you have done or not done with his son, Jesus Christ. It is appointed unto man once to die, after that, the judgment. A day has been appointed in which God will judge all men perfectly by his son Jesus Christ. Before that day comes, you need to get right with God. What? Can you hit the whip? It's a dance move. Can you hit the whip? Can you put one? See that mask they're asking for? Put one in your mouth, will you? Because, uh, say pardon? You haven't, you haven't got one of them hen. Oh, you don't know that. Uh, you're one of them, you're one of them hen without one. Huh? How do you know? I don't have a big You're a woman. Because you're a, a foolish woman, that's what you are. Insanity. Yeah, I am insane. Yeah, you are. You are. Absolutely. Absolutely insane. There, behold, there is the wrath of God. It's already on you. It's already all over you like a wrath. That's the wrath of God. Yeah. That's what he gives you over to when you say, I don't want God. I don't want his son. I don't want his salvation. So God says, okay, I'll open another door and I'll even give you a push to the door and I'll give you, I'll give you what you want. And so he gives you more more, it's more of you what you ugly. want. It's he gives you more sin. He gives you more sodomy. He gives you more insanity. He gives you more fornicating, blasphemy. He gives you what you want. That's the wrath of God. And the wrath of God is driving you down into damnation. That's what awaits you. That's the end of your sin. That's the end of your rebellion. Okay, not here, Here's the, here's the speaker. Oh, no, here's the speaker. Here's the speaker. Get it, bitch. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a question. I have a question for you. I have a question. What's that? Is that sensible one? Is that sensible? No, he doesn't. That's wrong. God does not love gays. God does not love. God only loves sinners 
in Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you have nothing, nothing to do with the love of God. God does not love everybody. God does not love everybody. God does not love everybody. God sent his son Jesus Christ into the world in order that his people might hear the gospel, believe on his son, and be saved. That's not everybody. Sad to say, very sad to say, it grieves me, believe me, but the majority under the sound of my voice here this afternoon will end up, will end up before the judgment of God and will end up in hell because it will not be given to you. It will not be given to you. The gospel, the life in Jesus Christ, the gift of God, the salvation of God, eternal life is given. It's not something you do. It's not something you work for. It's not something that you can be religious for. God must give it to you or it will never be yours. It's the gift of God by the grace of God. And so for you, I urge you, urge you that you seek him with all your heart. Seek him while he may be found. Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked, let the wicked, that's you. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will show mercy abundantly pardon. On your knees, you can. On your knees, crying out to God that he would have mercy, mercy upon you. And I tell you in this your day and generation, in your country, with the insanity, with the godlessness, I tell you with the degeneracy that you're faced with today in this country of yours, you haven't got much going for you. But my friends come to you on a regular basis to bring the gospel to you. They are your best friends. They are the ones who love you the most because they come and they tell you the truth about your nature, about your state before God, and how you can get right with God. The only way you can get right with God through Jesus Christ, his son. I am the way, says Jesus, the way back to God from the dark path of sin and death. I am the truth. The only reality that there is on campus today, Jesus Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no life apart from Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, he said. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Life, life in Jesus Christ by the grace of God, the gift of God, to Jesus Christ. No, thank you. No, thank you. But God loves gay people. Dead in your trespasses, dead in your trespasses and sins, with a sinful nature, a wicked nature out of which comes nothing but wickedness all your days, Wicked hearts of unbelief, without your commandment breaking, without your fornicating, without the sodomy, without the uncleanness, just simply an evil heart of unbelief, that's enough to damn you to hell forever. God will judge you. He will bring you to judgment for your evil hearts of unbelief. So I call upon you today, you can repent and believe the gospel. Cry out to God that he will give you the grace to repent and believe the gospel. 
that he would deliver you from your state of death and give you life through his son Jesus Christ and deliver you from the sin that's driving you down in your earthly existence, driving you towards the grave. And that's not the finish. That's not the end because there's a door that the undertaker doesn't tell you about in the grave down into the pit of hell in that place where the torment flames of the torment will rise up forever and ever believe me there's something to be saved from and jesus christ came into the world and died on a cross and rose again from the dead to conquer sin and death and hell and bring life eternal to those who repent and believe the gospel. My, my sheep, not the goats, my sheep, the goats go to everlasting destruction, the sheep to everlasting life. My sheep hear my voice, he says, and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. But no life, no life in you, just an earthly existence. Just like the brute beasts, you get up in the morning, what will I wear? What will I fill my belly with today? And that's all you think about. Just like the brute beasts, just like your pet dogs. Yeah, because you got no life in you. No thought of God in you. Blind, can't see a far off. Can't see that there's a God with whom you have to do it. Can't see the salvation of God. Can't see your sins. Can't see the judgment that awaits you. Blind, blind, willfully blind, stubbornly blind, blind. Why? Because you don't want to see. You don't want to see. You don't want to get out of your sin. You love your sin. You love the darkness because your deeds are evil. And you will never, you will never desire to get out your sin unless God breathes life into your soul. Unless God by His Son Jesus Christ imparts life to you, eternal life to you. Unless God gives you the light, unless He gives you the will, the desire, unless He gives you a hatred for your sin. Unless he breaks you, breaks your heart. Some of you, some of you one day, maybe will come to a very bad place. A place where you're broken. And a place where you've got nowhere to look and nobody to help. Remember I told you on that day, in your distress, in your trouble, cry out to God that he would have mercy on you. Call upon the name of the Lord that you might be saved. Because the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ shall be saved, shall not be ashamed, shall not be disappointed. But the majority of you here this afternoon, oh, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be ashamed in that day when God judges you. Your sins will be published across the universe for all to see, all creation to behold the wickedness of your heart and the wickedness of your conduct. Shame and disgrace will cover you in that day when God judges you by my Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I urge you this afternoon, you can, 
You can sinners, the worst of you and the best of you, whoever you are, whatever you are, you're a sinner in the hands of an angry God. You're a sinner, lost and undone, and you've ruined, you've ruined yourself, your own responsibility. You've ruined yourself with your sin, and you've not even been round the block yet. I urge you this afternoon, today, while you may, don't delay, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you might be saved. Because nobody else can. There's no hope. There's no hope for this, in, this insanity. There's no hope, there's no life, there's no joy, love and life and lasting joy found in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. No love on the campus, no love in the world, no love amongst you, no life in the world, no life in your immorality. There's only death there. No life in alcohol, no life in drugs. No life there. No life in the broken systems of this world. Love and life found in Jesus Christ alone. Love and life and lasting joy found in Jesus Christ and the Son of God. Come in to the world. Died on a cross, rose again from the dead, in order that a sinner like you, a broken sinner, lost and undone, in order that you might be saved, so great, so vast, immense, the love of God in Jesus Christ, for lost sinners such as you, that you in the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God might be saved salvation. Salvation. Fuck off my phone, my man. Just keep away from me then. Whoa, don't push me, my So like I say, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Because you're too near to me. Too near to me. Get away from me. Get away from me. I don't want your disease. I don't want to catch your disease, that's why. Christ Jesus came into the world. You must be a fan here. Not to make you rich. Not to make you healthy, wealthy, prosperous. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. To save wicked. Yukon sinners, Does Jesus celebrate the save you from the wrath, the present wrath of God, the wrath of God, the wrath of God revealed from heaven against all your ungodliness, unrighteousness, and holding down the truth of the knowledge of God in unrighteousness and wickedness, saved from the present wrath of God and saved from the wrath to come. Oh, that day of wrath is coming, Yukon. That day when God will pour out the true, final, unmitigated wrath of God poured out upon you in that day. What day is it? Unless by His grace Read the script. He are going off script. Unless by His grace he brings life into your soul, resurrects you, regenerates you. You must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless God by his son Jesus Christ makes you new. A new creation because that's all that matters to God. A new creation made new altogether, reborn, the power of my gospel, 
the power of God unto salvation for everybody, everybody who believes, who believes on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, sent into the world that through him that you might have life, life is a lasting, love eternal, that you might know the joy and the happiness of sins forgiven, that you might know that you have eternal life in the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Ready? My sheep, says Jesus, not the goats. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never, never, never perish. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, able, I tell you, to deliver you from your insanity, from your sin, from your death, from your hell, from his wrath that lies upon you now, able to save to the uttermost all who come to God by him. For there's no other by whom you can come to God, only his son, Jesus Christ. I am the way, he says. The truth and the life, no man comes to the Father but by me. One mediator, one mediator only, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Yeah!